I know this might sound like a morbid question, but it feels okay to ask. What's becoming more commonplace to talk about? Wrestlers dying or WWE releasing wrestlers? Holy crap! Every time you turn around, one of these happens, and then one of these happens! It's hard to keep track of it anymore. In 2021, is probably WWE releasing wrestlers. And today's release is certainly a newsworthy, trending on social media worthy item. The WWE has future endeavored Bray Wyatt. Well, I see what's going on here. I do! I do! You said you released Bray Wyatt. You said you released her name. You didn't say anything about releasing The Fiend. You didn't say anything about releasing Husky Harris. You didn't say anything about releasing Wyndham Rotunda, also known as Bray Wyatt. You said you released Bray Wyatt. I see this for the child support ducking conspiracy scheme that it clearly is. We're going to try and throw off the child supporties. They can't garnish a check if they can't find you. And he put his name down as Bray Wyatt in the child support documents. That's what this is about, folks. No, but... Maybe? Anyways. Yeah. So, this has happened. And... I don't know that... People are as surprised as you might expect. They can be a little shocked, like at the moment when something happens, but as you piece things together, you see some of the writing on the wall, or you see it and you say, you know what, I'm not really that surprised that this went down this way, especially with what WWE's been doing in 2021. This certainly isn't all that surprising to me. And when you look at the fact that we haven't seen The Fiend and Bray Wyatt on TV since WrestleMania, it really isn't that surprising to me. Now, as far as the details of why he was released, people are trying to make sense of this. And the reality is, is we've got reports out there, but it's hard to know 100% for sure. You know, some people have referenced some of the reports talking about that Bray Wyatt you know, was battling some mental health issues, especially some depression-related stuff around the uh, passing of Brody Lee, a.k.a. Jonathan Huber. That could be true. He could have asked for his release, for all we know. Because even a lot of the reports that you see, and even if they come from wrestling journalists that you respect, that doesn't automatically mean they're 100% correct every single time. So for all we know... He could have asked for his release. He could have said that he didn't want to do this right now and he didn't want WWE to continue to pay him. Like, could be. Although, again, with the child support stuff, I highly doubt that to be the case. You're not just going to turn down guaranteed money. Now, sure, getting released, if there's like a 90-day no-compete clause, they'll get whatever of that downside guarantee for that time frame. But, you know, we're seeing the reports talk about that it was budget cuts. I mean, seems totally fair, rational, and reasonable, right? That at a time of record profits for the WWE, that they're cutting a guy to save maybe a couple million dollars. Like, you know, that totally washes, that totally freaking makes sense. Budget cuts. Budget cuts. That's one thing if you say you're cutting a bunch of people that are lower on the totem pole. Because you could say, hey, we could reinvest that money elsewhere and make it back and maybe then some. You could also say there is a purpose to refreshing things every once in a while and sometimes releasing some talent isn't the worst thing in the world. And those aren't fundamentally untrue statements at all. But Wyndham Rotunda, Bray Wyatt, The Fiend, he's not one of them peeps. This is a guy that this company has invested a significant amount of resources into over the past eight years or so. 
a lot of resources. World champion, big spotlight, featured opponents, featured matches, main events of pay-per-views, all of that. Whether you always liked it or not, the reality is his company invested a shit ton in him. And there is certainly no question that you had a good portion of the wrestling, WWE, sports entertainment, whatever the frick you want to call it, fan base, that really dug his act, really dug his shtick, really dug his work. Whether it's as the Waylon Mercy knockoff cult leader or as the you know split personality fiend character. Like there's no question that he's not in that other bucket. This is a guy that moved merch. And we all know that merch matters to WWE. And he certainly moved his fair share of it over the years. So to sit there and say, yeah, you're paying him a lot of money, but if you feature him and actually feature him well, you're going to make that money back and then some through merch sales and so forth. So the whole budget cuts logic is complete bunk and total BS. And nobody should believe that crap. And I think we're at a point now where even the dopiest of WWE sheep would say, I don't buy that. I don't believe that because that doesn't make any damn sense. And it doesn't. It also doesn't make any sense to just basically sit there and say, you know what? This guy that we've invested all of this time, energy, effort, and resources into for several years, we're going to release him just so that way we can let him go to where we know he's probably going to eventually end up and give them down there in Jacksonville at AEW another talent that will actually fit there, another talent that could help a little bit. Another guy that will move the needle a little bit for them. Another guy that will give them some positive momentum. At this point in time, with what you're seeing out of WWE, you damn well wonder whether Vince McMahon is some type of minority shareholder in AEW. Seriously. Because you're releasing some of these folks knowing where they're going to go. Why would you take all of these resources that you've invested in Wyndham Rotunda over the years to then sit there and just hand them off potentially to somebody else? That's really bad, dumb dick business. The bluest of blue fucks are you even doing? It's bad enough that you sat there and basically went with this whole fiend character and because of your obsession with another blonde like Alexa Bliss, you said, you know what? We're going to put him here in this spot at WrestleMania where everything points to he should freaking beat Randy Orton. But nope, we're going to take this gimmick and we're just going to basically lift and shift and put it on freaking Alexa Bliss, which is exactly what the hell they did. They buried the Fiend at fucking WrestleMania just like several years ago. They buried him at WrestleMania when he faced off against Cena. Like Bray Wyatt, the Fiend, it was never going to be a character that's your number one character. It's never going to be your number one draw. But it certainly could be a main player character for you. Certainly a talent that you put in the world title picture. You know, somebody that appeals to a large segment of your audience. Somebody that moves merch. Somebody that you present and he's different than others. Like, there are plenty of reasons to keep him. Very, very few logical, credible reasons to get rid of him. And... You know, unless to the point, like, I could get like WWE saying, hey, we've been paying you your guarantee for several months and you haven't been here and you're not cooperating or you're not coming back. Like, at some point in time, we can't just be paying you to do nothing. That I totally get. And if they said, hey, we're trying to renegotiate your deal based off of the time that you're actually here. And he's like, no, I don't think so. Then I might even get that to a small degree why they would release him. But even then, that suggests a lack of awareness of the wrestling reality and situation right now. It might be worth it to bite a little bit of a loss here when you're making record profits so that way you just don't basically hand over him to your competition that you continue to pretend isn't competition and maybe right now they're truly not competition. They may never be. But why would you be in a position where you were basically handing over another talent that can help that company become your competition. That is dumb. That is incredibly bad business. Bad, 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 bad. And maybe we'll see if he makes a comment about whether or not this was related to him requesting it or being related to mental health or anything like that. But I think the real deal here is you have to look at it and you say, 
You know, you're not dealing with the Vince McMahon of old. You're just dealing with old Vince McMahon now. It was a really bad decision, in my opinion. You invested a ton into that talent, a ton of resources, time, television time, precious prime time, television time, for years, for over a half decade, into a talent to then cut your losses for nothing. So you could save a little money when you're already making fucking record profits? That shit doesn't add up. That doesn't wash. That doesn't make any damn sense. Because again, we're not dealing with the Vince McMahon of old here. We are dealing with old Vince McMahon. Irrational, erratic decisions. These are the types of things that you can expect from somebody that's out of touch. Something that you would expect from somebody dealing with the pressures of running a major international corporation that's publicly traded on Wall Street and so forth when they're in their freaking mid-70s. Like, this is not... An uncommon thing. Like Vince McMahon has gotten to the point of Al Davis territory. And if you're a football fan, you know what I'm talking about with Al Davis and the Raiders. Like for decades, he's one of the premier owners in the league. For decades, the Raiders were one of the class organizations in all of the NFL. But then he got really old and really out of touch, really impatient. Did a bunch of dumbass things. He had to have total, complete control over everything. That's basically what Vince McMahon has become now. Whereas you could say earlier on in his promoter career, he was an Al Davis type with some of the good things that went along with being Al Davis. Now as he's in his mid-70s, he's the bad version of Al Davis, the old version of Al Davis. Now as far as should AEW sign him, I know I've talked about you know the roster bloat that they have and he can't sign everybody. But here's the deal, a talent like this, that has a good creative mind, that has some versatility in the things that he could do, he could work as a face, he could work as a heel, be something different. You've got logical places you can shoehorn him in, you can shoehorn him in as a leader of the dark, or you can bring him in on his own, you can do any number of damn things. You can give him some voice in his creative, which I'm sure when it got to WWE, he had voice for a while, and then when they started to come to him with really dumbass ideas, especially with that bullshit they did at WrestleMania, he's probably like, fuck you, I'm good. You absolutely have to sign him. It's a total babyface move to do so. It's a logical business thing to do as well because you're taking somebody else that's still arguably in the prime of their career if they still want to do it in their good mind place and everything else. you got somebody in the prime of their career that you could bring into the fold, that these fans that watch this other company are going to sit there and say, you know what, I know that talent, I recognize that talent, and in a lot of cases, I even like that talent. He will bring something to the different to the table. He will help make those that you already have even better. If you're thinking about you know, investments in the guys like the Daniel Bryans and the CM Punks of the world, you want one of the key things, you've got to have opponents for those guys at some point. You bring in a freaking Wyndham Rotunda and all of a sudden you've got an opponent for each of them at some point in time. Makes their them better. Makes better use of your large, I'm sure, very sizable investment in both Brian Danielson and Philip Brooks. So you got to do it. As far as the reasoning why, could be any number of things. The reports are indicating it's budget cut which doesn't make any sense, which is why it absolutely totally makes sense that that's probably the reason that was given. I'm sure Johnny Ace called him and fired him and said, sorry kid, budget cuts, you know the deal. Ha <laughs> ha. Good luck in your future endeavors. Assholes. But the reality is, it is totally logical from a WWE standpoint because it's not the Vince McMahon of old, it's old man Vince McMahon and it's so erratic and makes no logical business sense. And even if you want to blame it on Nick Khan, he certainly got a large part to do with it. He could clearly see a shift to an even larger degree from a corporate standpoint versus a, hey, we're in the sports entertainment wrestling business. But at the end of the day, Vince McMahon is still the head MF or in charge of all that you see when it comes to WWE. So this is on his plate, this is on his shoulders. And just a totally asinine decision, in my opinion. If he didn't want to wrestle still for a while, fuck it, pay him to stay there. Don't send him off somewhere else. That's stupid.